So we're going to kick off now um, diving into the traditional auto industry and actually looking at how an open approach can really make a big difference and actually have a much more efficient and effective outcome. Um, so I'm very excited to kick off our day with um, Tin Hang Lui, the co-founder and CEO of Open Motors, which was formerly known as OS Vehicle and uh, is a former Y Combinator uh, company. So give us a big round of applause for Tin Han Lui. Hello everyone. I'm Tin, founder and CEO of Open Motors. And even if it doesn't look like, actually, I'm uh, from Europe. Uh, my parents are from Italy. And uh, no, actually, I, am, I was born in Italy. My parents are from Hong Kong. So today I'm going to talk about uh, a different way, a different approach for the automotive industry. Let's say more open. So uh, I will divide it in three parts. How we can, um, what's the situation right now? how the car of the future should be, and how we can get there. So what is happening right now? Um, I had the idea of uh, Open Motors, formerly OS Vehicle, back in 2009. I was working in a very big and famous automotive company for design and engineering. And I, had, I thought about that the innovation will come from Silicon Valley and this uh, area will dis disrupt the automotive industry. At the time they thought I was crazy, but now it's pretty obvious. We have companies like Tesla, okay? So this is what is happening right now. More software, computing power, connectivity in the vehicle, sensors. Another big trend is that more and more people, especially in the big cities, they are not willing to buy cars that much like before. In cities like Paris, if you live in a city center, prob probably you don't want to own a car. Instead, you will prefer to, have, uh, to use taxis or Uber or something like this. And this is happening in many major cities in the US, in Asia, in Europe. So this is a big trend that is happening. And if you see also the stats from uh, uh, European countries, for example, also new generation are postponing the driving license age up to 25 years. For me, it was it's crazy, actually. <laughs> Thankfully, we are also heading to a green and sustainable future. And players like Tesla, they are doing an amazing job. I'm a super fan of Elon. And they are making it so sexy. So Tesla Motors. Tesla Energy, they are doing a very great ecosystem integration. Unfortunately, even Tesla is not really solving this problem. It's a huge problem, car graveyards. So basically, uh, plan obsolescence related to vehicles. And putting batteries in a, in a vehicle is not enough. This is a problem, especially with mobility as a service, because cars are not used only for a couple of hours a day, but they're going to be used more and more, potentially up to 24 hours a day. There are companies working with Uber, for example, they own licenses, they own cars, fleets of cars, and they do shift with two person, two drivers, 12 hours and 12 hours. The problem is that Uber and other players in mobility as a service, like uh, ride sharing, car sharing, they are still using cars that are designed and engineered for ownership. Which means that these cars are designed and engineered to be parked more than 95% of the lifetime. Under heavy usage, instead of 10 years, normally of a uh, uh, lifespan of a vehicle, this can drop dramatically, sometimes less than two years. So let's say a very successful car sharing or ride sharing company that owns vehicle, they have to throw away thousands of vehicles every two years. 
And actually, this is a quite recent photo, and this is Germany, so this is not third world. And another trend is that um, more and more companies are introducing new technologies in the vehicle. This is uh, what we call in Silicon Valley lab on wheels. In Italy, we call it albero di Natale, which means like a Christmas tree because <laughs> they are putting a lot of objects. And most of these vehicles are, in a way, accepted for pilot projects. But if, if you need to deploy this massively, most of these parts are not even legal for the road legal certification. So we have to design, engineer, and think about also manufacture and recycle vehicles in a completely different way. So after collecting a lot of data from uh, tier one suppliers in the automotive industry, from uh, auto OEMs, startups working on self-driving, for example, ride-sharing companies, car-sharing companies, we understood how the car of the future should be. So obviously, it has to be electric. We need batteries in the vehicle, exactly like Tesla, NIO. This, this type of vehicle should be designed and engineered for services like Uber. And this is very interesting how Fortune pictured the car of the future. This is a, a very great illustration that pictured the car of the future more similar to an iPhone which is pretty cool, but I think that this is not really the, the right way to picture it because if you think about the form factor, the car is way bigger, okay? And if we do all things like Apple, we're gonna destroy the planet very soon. So the approach sh should be like a supercomputer, okay? Like a server, a workstation with four wheels. And also, this is the same vision shared by Intel. This is their, uh, their official tweet. So the future is about supercomputer on wheels. Obviously, the form factor of the vehicle should be more like a vehicle. And this vehicle should be, the car of the future should be empowering okay, services. This could be the perfect car for Lyft, Uber, Didi. This could be a logistic vehicle for Amazon, for example. This could be a self-driving car for food delivery. And how we can get there, the last part. We need absolutely to think about shared technology, okay? So common platforms to optimize the cost. Even Tesla, in the very beginning, they bought platform from Lotus. They did the retrofit and they came in the market faster with the, the first model, the Tesla Roadster, because it's not easy to develop everything from scratch, okay? We have to bring this approach from the software industry to the car industry as well, sharing as much as possible, potentially putting a lot of uh, this data, okay, and sources in open source, okay? sharing APIs and data in general. So that's a very important approach. Also, it's so, so important to think about the modularity. Modularity is the key to make the entire industry way more sustainable financially and environmentally. So even the exterior body has to be modular, okay? We have to replace parts easily. We, we have to refurbish entire fleets of vehicles easily. Because if you think about this, okay, the technology that is every, uh, every year companies like NVIDIA, LG, they are introducing, the form factor is changing. So if we want to have a better and safer experience with self-driving, for example, we cannot throw away millions of vehicles worldwide to do this. 
unless we can replace some parts and some key components. Okay? So we have to avoid this, basically. And actual cars are not welcoming new technologies. Okay, so the, the, the integration should be something like this, very slick and seamless. Obviously, also the, the technology under the hood has to be modular. Not only at the hardware level, also at the software level, okay? So it's very important that you can, for, to lower the cost of, uh, of uh, maintenance, maintenance uh, the cost per kilometer, okay? It's very important that you can replace batteries, that you can replace electric motor easily, okay? Obviously, the interior as well has to be rethink. This is the normal layout okay, of a traditional car. And this could be the layout for a level 5 autonomous driving. So no steering wheel. You have a table. You can work. You can watch Netflix while this vehicle is bringing you from A to B. And obviously, all the parts that we are introducing in the vehicles, these are all, has to be all modularized, okay? So companies can work on a specific module at the hardware and the software level, and through APIs, communicate with the entire system. It's interesting, and it's a very different way of uh, traditional cars. So we're not talking about Tesla or Nissan, we are talking about mobility as a service. And according to the latest report from Strategy Analytics and Intel, actually the market is going to be huge, over $7 trillion by 2050. 3.7 for moving people, 3.2 for logistics, and close to 300 billion for small businesses like restaurants. But there's a bad news. Uh, nobody, even I'm a super fan of Tesla and Nissan, for example, they are making amazing cars for ownership. So they're doing electric cars, okay. There is no modularity. They, they, are, they aren't focused on services. It's very expensive to repair. And there is no hardware upgradability or open API, okay? Let me tell you a very short story. I have a wealthy friend from uh, Silicon Valley. He bought the Tesla Model S and was so happy. And a few weeks after, uh, Elon said, we, are gonna, we already put some hardware in your car and with a software upgrade, you're gonna have self-driving features. Everybody excited. My friend was super excited. He, tried, he did the software upgrade, but there was no autopilot. So he went to Tesla and said, what's happening? You told me that you can do an upgrade and uh, a software upgrade and they have everything. And they checked the model and they saw that, oh, unfortunately, you bought the Tesla two weeks before we released at the hardware level the self-driving components and parts. So he was very pissed. And <laughs> the solution was only this, selling the previous Tesla and buy a new one. He thought about it, like two minutes, and he did it. So he bought the new Tesla for the, for the first release of Aut Autopilot. And now they released the Autopilot version 2, okay, and 2.5, same story. So imagine if you are a player like Uber, okay, in a self-driving industry, you have, there are no drivers anymore, so nobody is going to put the car in this system. Uber has to buy millions of cars, and to have a better self-driving, they have to throw away every two years millions of vehicles to have a safer technology. This is obviously a bad approach. The good news is that, thankfully, we are doing it. So our company is focusing since day one in modular vehicles designed and engineered for services. Future proof, so you can do software upgrade, but also hardware upgrade.
Introducing the future of the automotive industry. A ready to use road legal vehicle designed and engineered in Italy. Featuring a platform that is entirely modular, allowing vehicles to adapt to any situation, any location, any need. A truly adaptable vehicle designed and engineered for services. The modular platform allows for truly future-proofed vehicles, ready to easily repair, refurbish, and upgrade any part necessary, with flexibility to choose even up to level five complete autonomous driving. A fleet of self-driving, truly white label vehicles can operate up to 24 hours every day, allowing for maximum efficiency. And because the entire platform is built on a modular architecture, fleets of vehicles can last 10 times longer customizable, modular, and upgradable, designed to last, designed to evolve. And that's pretty much all. Thank you. Thank you. So we have time for uh, one or two questions. Um, and Victor is going to run around with the microphone. Any questions? Don't be shy. Are you feeling some interest coming from the major uh, car manufacturers to work with you, or are they just trying to keep away? Yeah, actually, in the beginning, they hated us. <laughs> but uh, we are good people. We are also very friendly. And No, I'm joking. But anyway, uh, yeah, they, in the beginning, they didn't really like us. But now, uh, actually, we don't see... We, we are explaining to them that we, we are not seeing them as competitors. Okay? Most of them are very focused on uh, vehicle for ownership. Okay? So we are doing something completely different. Okay? And in some cases, we are trying to find ways to collaborate on this. Yeah. So yeah. it's a kind of love and hate, but manageable. <laughs> How do you deal with charge times for a vehicle that's going to be running 24 hours a day? Can you repeat again? How do you deal with charge times of an electric vehicle charge time, yeah. that's going to be running 24 hours a day? So that's an interesting question. So right now, uh, in most of the cities around the world, there, is, there isn't a great infrastructure for charging cars. So uh, let's say there are two ways. Okay, one is fast charging. And Tesla is really pushing this. In one hour or less, you can fast charge a vehicle. But for us, one hour is still a lot. Okay? So companies are working on new technology to charge in a few minutes. Okay? Uh, but they are still not stable yet. They're not very, they haven't released uh, this technology yet. And uh, we believe in a... We are working actually on um, modular and stackable batteries. Yeah. So the objective is to be faster than uh, also uh, in the gasoline gas station. Usually you have a full tank in, uh, you fill the full tank in about three minutes, let's say. We want to do it in, short, in a shorter time with this. Yeah. And in this way also you can uh, have a lighter infrastructure in the city, yeah. but still confidential. We will release in the next month. Yeah, uh, <coughs> Hello, thank Hi. you very much for your talk. Um, do you already have published uh, some open API description of your components? Uh, and if no. not, when do you plan to? Yeah, yeah. OK, so um, actually, here there's uh, my colleague Josias. If you can raise your hand. Yeah. If you want to talk to him, okay, so uh, we are working on it. It's not an easy process, especially when you have to talk with tier one suppliers in this very close industry. So uh, let's say that already uh, we released most of the sources of our core technology in open source, and you can download it for free in, from our website. But convincing uh, also tier one suppliers to release more and more 
it's not easy. And the reality is that right now, a lot of my friends that are involved in Silicon Valley in self-driving, they are literally spending combined millions and years of doing one thing, reverse engineering. Sometimes reverse engineering on the same vehicle. So this is a very crazy waste of energy in general. And our objective is to reduce this close to zero. So Josias is working day and night on this. So <laughs> and by this year, we're going to release open, uh, some open APIs, OK, and, uh, and also other sources. Thank you so much, Tin, and thank you for your questions. Thank you.